guys, welcome back. This is Wedge Kids Wednesday. Mr. Casey, Mr. Vince, we're so glad that you joined us again on this Wednesday evening. What are we doing today, Mr. Vince? Actually, I thought that you'd help walk me through this passage in Matthew chapter 7, and we are going to use the soap method today. Yeah, so can I share with you us what is soap? I'd like to actually know. Yeah, so in case you don't know, uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 27 was the passage from Sunday. And soap is, the S stands for scripture. You just write out the scripture, or you can write out a couple of things that remind you of the scripture. O is observation, which is kind of like, what are the things in there that stand out in a verse that make you like, what does this mean? Or uh, what does it stand for? So that's kind of the observation. A stands for application. So it's like, okay, what does God want me to do with this? How can I do this in my life today, tomorrow, the next day? That's what A stands for, application. And then P is simply just praying and saying, God, okay, now I understand this scripture. Help me to do this. Absolutely. So Casey, is there any way that we can kind of walk through this piece of scripture from Sunday? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So if you have your Bibles uh, with us, can you turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24? That's what we'll be starting out. And if you didn't hear the sermon from Sunday, if you want to go ahead and pause us and maybe read the scripture for yourself and give you some time to grab a piece of paper and a pencil, we can all do this together. Yeah, that'd be great. But if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go too. Ready? I'm ready. All right, let's start this out at Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Mm-hmm. Okay. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them... So, what do they mean by everyone when they say, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine? I think the first thing is, when you see the word everyone, it says everyone who hears God's word. So, it's like, if you've heard God's word, that's you. Everyone, every person who has heard God's word read to them, or if they've read it, or if you've been told the scripture from God's word, I think that includes you. That's the everyone. That's awesome. Yep. So verse, number, uh, verse two says, may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. hmm. What does it mean when they say built his house? What does the house mean? The house. Oh, I'm going to write house. So house. So we're doing this observation. House. What does that mean? So it seems like kind of when you look real quickly, I know we haven't gotten to the foolish man, but both people are building a house. There's a, there's a uh, wise man and a foolish man. Both men are building a house. So it seems like to me the house is, is your life because both people have something going on that they're building. And I think for us, we can just call it our life. We're building our life on, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. So a house is maybe your or our life. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So um, verse 25 says, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against that house. Mm -hmm. Okay, i got to stop us here for a mm -hmm. second. So if the house is our life, Mm -hmm. What does the winds and the rains and the floods mean? So I think one of the things that you could say, everyone has storms in their life, you know, and so one storm maybe, for example, that has come into all of our lives would be this coronavirus. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that has just wrecked us where we haven't been able to go to church or school or all these different things, parties. Uh, but another thing that may be more practical every day, kind of storms in our life is uh, maybe our parents asked us to clean our room or pick up all of our stuff out of uh, our living room, you know, and we thought, oh, I'll get most of it, or we did it, or maybe we were just in a rush to do it because we were ready to play video games or uh, play on our tablets or whatever. And so we did most of the things, but we really didn't uh, do everything they asked, and we kind of knew it, but we just ignored it. And then later when they came back and found out, we get all mad, like, what? I thought you told me to do this. You know, that's kind of a storm. I think also another storm might be, you know, when you're playing with your brothers or your sisters and everybody starts to get frustrated and instead of like maybe taking a minute to calm down, you just blow up at them. You just oh, yeah. yell at them, scream at them, they're screaming at you. You might be throwing down, knocking each other, I don't know, but that's kind of resulted in a storm. So that's kind of when things come in our life, 
um, when they just happen and it's like explosive, like a fight, or we get frustrated at our parents because we, they keep requiring us to do more and more chores. Oh, yeah. Maybe even cleaning the dishes, folding the laundry. You know, it's not, the storms are not doing those tasks. The storms are sometimes how we respond. We blow up, we get mad, we get angry, we get frustrated at even our parents, our brothers, our sisters. So I think sometimes those are the storms in our life. Oh, wow. Mm hmm. I'm going to write that out for us. Storms could be when, when we respond. Mm -hmm. Can I say bad, even? How's that? Okay. Okay, I get that. I think I can get that. So, on, in verse 26, it says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them. Wait. Over here, it said, whoever acts on them. So, what does it mean by not acting on them? Mm -hmm. So, if you hear or read God's word and you don't act on them, I think that's kind of like the foolish man. Oh, so I should keep going. Will be like a foolish man who mm -hmm. built his house on the sand. Yeah. So let's uh, let's write real quick. Wise man. What did the wise man do earlier? Have we gotten to that part? Well, I noticed that he built his house on the rock. So. And the foolish man built his house on the sand. So that leads me to my next question. Oh, okay. What is the rock? Oh, that's a really good question. So the rock, I think, is Jesus. It's God's word. It's obeying God's word and obeying the things that Jesus has called us to do. I mean, um, that, that is really the foundation of our life, should be on God's word and, and what he's called us to do and how he wants us to live. So that kind of, you said foundation. That brings me to my next question here. Um, when it says in verse 24 up here, maybe compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Is the rock his foundation? So Jesus, our life, our foundation would be Jesus. Yeah, and it's actually obeying God's word and Jesus' words, uh, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Because I know sometimes, like, for example, the story of uh, maybe brothers and sisters fighting, I think sometimes the Holy Spirit whispers to us, like, hey, calm down, walk away, and we're like, no, I'm angry, I'm mad, and we just blow up. And that's when the storm comes, is after that. But that Holy Spirit was saying, don't do this, don't do that, and yet we let our emotions take over and we ignore it. So that's why when it talks about the wise man, it's like the one who hears and obeys is a wise man. The foolish man is the one who hears and doesn't obey. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. then in, in verse 27, it says, The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. Mm. So right. these, what I'm, what I'm hearing that you said was these rains that came, these floods that came, and how we chose to respond to these situations, we weren't really built on the rock, were we? Yeah, we really probably... A couple of things. Maybe we just haven't been hearing and obeying God's word, and so we weren't built on the, on the foundation of Jesus that way. Uh, or maybe what could be happening is we've really never made Jesus the Lord of our life. And that's ultimately what God calls us to, is to have a relationship daily with Him where we, our life is connected to Him through a relationship, through reading the Bible every day and knowing Him, and not just saying, oh yeah, I know God, or oh yeah, I go to church, uh, or, oh, yeah, I gave a, a couple of dollars from my allowance. You know, all those things are good things. But God says just because we do good things doesn't mean we have a relationship. How we have a relationship with Him is, again, hearing His Word, reading His Word through the Bible, and then obeying Him. So is that how we apply this whole thing? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things that we could do to apply it. One is, um, you know, we could start taking a moment every day, maybe after breakfast, Good. We get done with breakfast, we put our dishes in the sink or whatever we need to do with that. And then we just take a moment to sit down, read God's Word, and then try to live that out that day. You know, and so maybe it's just one verse, maybe it's two verses. This time we did four verses, but that might be too many for, uh, you know, for some people. So sometimes just one or two verses 
and then try to live that out honoring Jesus that day. That's a great application. And then the other application is maybe your mom or, or dad or someone asks you to go clean your room. You know, make sure you go clean your room and then come back to them and say, hey, mom, dad, so-and-so, will you come check my room? Make sure it's okay before I move on and do this other thing I really want to do. Because that's really listening and obeying and following what they asked you to do. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Not all the time do I feel like I have enough time to go through um, four or five verses. Yeah. So what if I just did maybe one verse a day? Maybe I, I read for a couple of minutes. Would that mm -hmm. still mean that I'm trying to build my life on, on the rock? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think if uh, God never says the more you read of the Bible, the more spiritual you are. God never says in the Bible, if you read a whole chapter in one day, that like, oh, he gives you this great blessing. No, he just says the one who hears and obeys. Even if it's just one verse, that's enough for that day. Well, that's awesome, man. And that brings us to our um, portion of soap, which is <laughs> prayer, right? Right. So this is how we, we can apply this all and give it to God, right? Yeah, basically just spend a couple of moments saying, God, help me to hear from you and obey you, help me to hear from my parents and obey them. Because one thing is, I know when I obey my parents, I'm obeying God. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's good to learn. Well, is there any way that you can kind of uh, wrap this up with us and, and pray for us today? That would be great. Let's pray together. That would be awesome. God, thank you so much for this Wednesday that you've gathered us together. Thank you for your word and thank you even for Pastor Dale and Wedgwood Baptist Church that teaches us about your word. Thank you for our parents um, in our homes that take care of us and give us um, guidelines to follow, things to do to keep us safe and to protect us. Lord, help us to obey them. Help us to obey you. God, we want to, but sometimes we forget. Sometimes we get busy. Sometimes we just want to do other things and, and really we, we forget the importance of hearing from you, God. So today, remind us to obey you and help us to follow through and do it, because that's what a wise man is. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Casey. Yeah, and that was uh, fun. I think there was something we, we needed to take a closer look on. Oh, we... is this in the way, maybe blocking maybe, it? Maybe it is. <laughs> oh, wow. Focus, what does that mean? So Focus is our Sports and Fine Arts Camp, and the registration ends this coming Sunday night. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. So starting next week, we're going to start emailing everyone that registered with some things to uh, get ready for, to prepare. And of course, you and I are going to give them a great experience on June 8th through the 11th. So that's just two weeks away, I think. And it's going to be a great Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday full of activities, full of fun things that they don't want to miss. I am really looking forward to that. I cannot wait to see how much fun we have with all you guys. Yeah, so... We hope you guys have had a, uh, a great day today. This might have been a different experience to, uh, that we soaked with you and really broke down the passage from being the wise builder uh, and then the foolish builder. But we know it's hard to obey God's word. It's hard to do even the things that uh, our parents, our authorities ask us to do. So again, um, hear from God's word, listen to your parents and obey them because that's how God will really bless your life. So y'all have a great evening and we'll see you later.